This is the third lecture of the liver. The objectives of this lecture is to speak about the liver tumors and briefly I will speak about the liver transplantation. In this slide I will speak about liver tumors. Liver tumors consist of benign and malignant tumor. And benign tumor consists of three types of the liver. Hemangioma, hepatic adenoma, and focal nodular hyperplasia. Let us start to speak first about hemangioma, which is vascular lesion, which is most common type of benign liver tumor. It is often multiple of cavernous type, and it is symptomless. Hemangioma of two large, then leading to formations of mass, would be compressible then. They have little if any malignant potential. Diagnosis of hemangioma by ultrasound scan, which is diagnostic, showing abnorm abnormal plexus of vessels. And then CT scan is very good diagnostic tool for hemangioma, showing peripheral nodular enhancement on arterial face, then centripetal enhancement. So it is delayed or slow contrast enhancement due to small vessel uptake. Percutaneous bi bi biopsy shouldn't be done, should be avoided because it leads to profuse bleeding because it is vascular tumor, vascular lesion. Treatment of hemangioma if it's small and asymptomatic then no treatment. If large and symptomatic then the treatment is controversial. Some of them said angiographic embolization to occlude feeding vessels and some of them go to lobe or segmental resection or sometimes deep x-ray therapy to decrease the size of tumor indication of treatment of hemangioma is indications of treatment of hemangioma includes arteriovenous shunting that embarrass heart function to misdiagnosis of malignant vascular tumor This slide show pictures of CT scan showing hemangioma. To start with, there is early peripheral enhancement and then centripetal enhancement, which is diagnostic in CT scan for liver hemangioma. This is again CT scan, pictures of CT scan of the liver showing hepatic angioma, hemangioma, the peripheral arterial enhancement followed by central centripetal enhancement which is diagnostic for liver hemangioma by CT scan. B. Hepatic adenoma which is a pre-malignant lesion. It happens in women with contraceptive pills and it develops in otherwise normal liver tissue. Diagnosis by ultrasound scan and CT scan showing well cir circumscribed solid tumor but unfortunately difficult to differentiate from malignant tumors radiologically so and geography is important to show well developed peripheral arterializations of tumor treatment lob or segmental resection is treatment of choice should be resected the hepatic adenoma because it's a pre malignant see focal nodular hyperplasia which is focal overgrowth of functioning liver tissue supported by fibrous tissue stroma, hepatocyte and cover cell. It happens in middle age female ladies with no association with underlying liver disease. It is unusual and unknown etiology. Diagnosis by ultrasound showing solid tumor. CT scan showing central scarring and well vascularized lesion, which is again not specific. Now, sulfur colloid liver scan is important in diagnosis of focal nodular hyperplasia and become positive in case focal nodular hyperplasia because it contains cover cells which uptake the sulfur. But adenoma and primary or metastatic tumor negative in sulfur colloid liver scan because it hasn't contained cover cells. No cover cell in the other tumors other than focal nodular hyperplasia so it is negative in case of sulfur colloid liver scan treatment surgery in terms of segmental dissection 
This is light showing CT scan finding of focal nodular hyperplasia. You can easily see the central scarring and well vascularized lesion. In this slide. Malignant. In this slide, I will speak about malignant liver tumors. Firstly, I would speak about primary cancer, which is number one, hepatocellular carcinoma, HCC. It is one of the commonest tumors in the world, especially United Kingdom. It is associated with chronic liver disease, I mean hepa hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus. So it needs screening by ultrasound and alpha fetoprotein. It affects people in middle age, third to fourth decades. Male to female ratio is 8 to 1. 80% of primary liver malignancies and actually 80% of hepatocellular carcinoma occurs in cirrhotic liver and it may be multicentric. Alpha fetoprotein increase so it could be considered as tumor marker in case of hepatocellular carcinoma. Clinical features of hepatocellular carcinoma sign and symptoms of chronic liver disease for example malaise, weakness, jaundice, ascites, portal hypertension in addition to signs and symptoms of cancer in general, weight loss, anorexia, etc. Diagnosis definitely by ultrasound followed by CT scan, then biopsy to prove tissue diagnosis, treatment, one surgical resection either lobe or segment or segments, to liver transplantation and this depends on the size, site and availability of donor. Hepatocellular carcinoma is either single or multiple masses that are hypodense to normal liver as you could see in these two pictures of CT scan of hepatocellular carcinoma in this slide. In addition you could see calcification may be seen plus possibly signs of liver cirrhosis in addition to possible presentations of presence of splenomegaly. In addition, after contrasting injection, and this should be triphasic study, arterial phase, we could see very early arterial perfusion, followed by portal phase, which is rapid contrast washout. Number two, malignant, other malignant tumor of liver is cholangiocarcinoma, which, is, which happened in elderly age and in patients with primary sclerosing cholangitis. In cholangiocarcinoma, could be the, the lesion could be fibrotic tumors, leading to stricture, often fibrous at the confluence of right and left hepatic ducts, leading to jaundice, or could present distally and showing polypoid obstructing the lumen of bile duct. The clinical features of cholangiocarcinoma include painless obstructive jaundice, sometimes in large tender liver in addition to weight loss, fever and asthenia. Diagnosis by firstly ultrasound scan showing dilated intrahepatic but not extrahepatic bile ducts and this is very important. When you see dilated intrahepatic but not extrahepatic bile ducts, this gives a hint to cholangiocarcinoma. And then patient would be sent to um, RCP, magnetic resonance pericreatico cholangiography, to document and see these changes. And then cholangiography, for example, ERCP, endoscopic, I mean endoscopic retrograde cholangiography, could see the hilar structure and take in breast cytology and send it for tissue uh, diagnosis for histopathology. And this is beneficial in two thirds of cases. I mean, give the diagnosis in two-thirds of cases and sometimes CT scan is beneficial in cholangiocarcinoma in many cases detect mass if there is infiltration of cholangiocarcinoma to the liver parenchyma then, and then this mass could be detected by computerized CT scan and angiography sometimes beneficial to detect local spread of this tumor to portal vein or hepatic artery. In this slide, this is bismuth classifications of cholangiocarcinoma. 
bismuth classification one the lesion near the confluence of right and left hepatic ducts bismuth classification two the tumor at the confluence of right and left hepatic ducts while three a the lesion or cholangiocarcinoma involves the confluence and right hepatic duct whereas 3b the tumor involves the confluence and left hepatic duct and finally bismuth 4 the tumor involves the confluence and both right and left hepatic ducts treatment surgical resection plus chemo and radiotherapy prognosis unfortunately very poor primary sclerosing cholangitis this has happened in young adults and is progressive fibrous stricture and obliteration of both intra and extra hepatic bile duct etiology unknown but genetics that's likely attributed to association with ulcerative colitis diagnosis one cholangiography i mean mrcp or ercp showing irregular narrowing of bile duct if 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 equivocal the diagnosis then we could go to liver biopsy that shows fibrous obliteration of biliary tracts outcome either obstructions leading to jaundice or finally leading to liver failure cholangiocarcinoma diagnosis by biliary brush cytology by ERCP treatment follow up and monitoring biliary stenting by ERCP leading to temporary relief of obstructive jaundice or eventually liver transplantation the only useful treatment modality in this slide i will speak about secondary liver tumors which is called hepatic deposit secondary liver tumors are much more common malignant tumor of the liver while hepatocellular carcinoma is the commonest primary malignant tumor in the liver secondary liver tumors are usually multiple and comes from two sources either intra-abdominal or extra-abdominal intra-abdominal sources include gastrointestinal tract commonly colorectal in addition to pancreas uterus and ovaries the extra-abdominal causes uh, abdominal sources include melanoma, carcinoid tumor, breast, and sarcoma. Diagnosis of secondary liver tumor include one diagnosis of liver tumors as described before, for example, ultrasound scan, CT scan, and other investigations. Two diagnosis of primary tumor or primary site includes clinical examination, chest CT scan, contrast abdominal CT bone scan, colonoscopy, etc. Treatment, one surgical resection, if not resectable, then systemic chemotherapy, including 5-FU and folinic acid. Treatment, the prognosis, sorry, the 5-year survival rate after resections of solitary colorectal metastasis is 35%. Hepatic deposits or secondary tumors in the liver these are two pictures of CT scan showing hepatic deposits the liver is the second most common site for deposits after nodes 30% to 70% of patients who die of cancer have liver deposits In this slide, I will speak in brief about liver transplantation. Let us start to speak about indications. There are four groups of indications. Group 1, cirrhosis and chronic liver failure. Example, alcoholic liver disease, viral liver disease, hepatitis B and C, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, primary biliary cirrhosis, biliary atresia in children. To acute liver failure, example acute fulminant liver failure, usually viral or drug induced, example paracetamol overdose. 
Group 3 of indication metabolic liver disease, example, Wilson's disease, oxalosis, and familial amyloid polyneuropathy. Group 4, primary hepatic malignancy, which is more common, predisposed by liver cirrhosis, especially in virally induced. Technical complication. When hemorrhage treated by PAC peritransplant area, 2 to 3 days corrections of coagulopathy and maybe evacuation. 2. Vascular complication most commonly spontaneously occur or due to acute rejection in pediatric recipient or primary sclerosing cholangitis diagnosis by ultrasound or angiography, treatment retransplantation. 3. Biliary complications most commonly biliary stenosis, biliary leak, treatment endoscopic dilatations and stenting or surgical correction outcome of liver transplantation actually it depends on underlying disease it depends on the cause of liver transplantation when the best outcome is in chronic liver disease this is good fact the best outcome is in chronic liver disease two whereas in acute liver diseases there is a higher mortality rate in early post, post transplantation because of multiple organ failure. Three, while patients with liver tumors have very good early outcome, but ultimately fare much less well because of tumor malignancies recurrence. Four, patients with hepatitis B or C may develop graft failure due to recurrent viral infections. Management of perioperative coagulopathy by assessment repeatedly and correction with appropriate clotting factors. Many centers use rational, ra rational thromboelastography and this is the thromboelastography in theater. This picture of it included in this slide and the other picture showing the technique of transplantation. Just to show you. At the end of this lecture, could you please have a look for these cross match for training about the liver tumors. Thank you.